I don't they say you have to swap your irons often because yeah. you still hit your irons more and you want the same spin and everything. I know you use them at the bunker, yeah. so oh, anyway. Yeah. Right, this is a bit of a random one, but if you're willing to do it, let's do it. Um, in fact, I think I could pull this up for you, actually. In fact, you do it. So, it's from Rob Johnson. He said, what are Rick's last five liked YouTube videos? And he said, excluding his own. And what do you mean? Said, Ones that I've so liked? So, go on your YouTube, videos that you have liked, and okay. then tell him, tell us what they are. But they can't be your own. Because you, we, you know, we all know you are partial to liking your own videos. I don't like my own videos. You like your own tweets? I don't. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> how do you even find out? Go on to... I've um, oh, got it, got it, got it, got it. Last five. It's a good job it doesn't show disliked videos. <laughs> uh, oh, actually, that's yeah, quite sad. <laughs> is it actually your own? <laughs> it is as well. Do you know what it is? Go on. It's all the... Uh, podcast clips. Podcast clips. All right, let, let's go past the podcast podcast clips. Oh, maybe not so topical anymore. Um, I bought a new house. Who was that? 2021. Who was that? David Dobrik too. Oh, oh right, okay. Not as uh, topical anymore. Um, Robbie Williams sets Mission Impossible nice. lockdown challenge. Who's that from? Uh, Tubes. Tubes and Ange. Yeah. Shout out to Tubes and Ange. I learn. Uh, Bryson DeChambeau's putting technique, that, and I loved it. That is from um, Kyle Berkshire. Correct. Uh, last one I'm going to do. Oh, this is interesting. How I lost 70 pounds to play better golf. Is it that guy that does stuff with Dan Hendrickson? It, I've seen that video, but it's not him. All right, okay. Uh, the Golf Monthly one, Mike Harris. Oh, right, nice. Uh, and then that's it. Okay, um, another couple then. Of, of my own <laughs> or the second channel. This is a question that I kind of saw and at first thought it was a bit of a humorous one, but it's actually not. It could be a really good bit of advice. It's from Robert Munford. He said, um, great podcast, which is a great way to start your question because that means Simple. it's a good chance of it getting read out. Um, what do you think about golfers using chippers around the putting green? Yeah, it doesn't... Oh, around the putting green is in... Well, no, it just means... Sorry, around... It just means in general, not around the practice putting green, oh, but right. in, on the golf course, having a chipper in yeah. your bag. Yeah, fine. Mm. I think I've given it some stick in the past, a bit like iron head covers, but I can respect somebody who uses a chipper Yeah, because they're, they're a useful tool. And, and if you struggle with chipping and it's stopping you from enjoying the game of golf, then you should not, not use one yeah. just because of Stigma. people's opinion. Yeah. No, I agree. I think... The only way I would talk people out with them, and this isn't everybody, but if you are struggling, because obviously you've only had 14 clubs in the bag, if you're thinking that you've almost, you're struggling, you want to put hybrid in or whatever, and you can't because of the fact you've got a chipper, it would be quite good to just learn to use a 9 iron, because that would then mean you take the chipper out and use your 9 iron and put the hybrid in or whatever. Yeah. But having said that, most amateur golfers don't even have a lot. Of them don't even have forty. They have twelve or eleven clubs. I'm not even care. Exactly. And if you like, you said if a chipper is going to help you, because what's handy with the chipper is you have a loft of a eight iron normally, well, eight or nine iron. It can iron. vary. Yeah, you can get more lofted ones now as well. Well, yeah, but then the length wise, they're more like a putter length, yeah, aren't they? Exactly. So you get that control. And the idea of if you're not aware of chippers, I'm guessing a lot of people are. They used to be called chipping putters back in my day. Yeah. Yeah, and they actually used they to be called cheating sticks. Well, yeah, the, the idea like is it. that you almost put with it, don't you? Really, yeah. kind of, you just literally. It's put. a lofted putter. Yeah, exactly, and it'll just help you. Then Odyssey did some, do you remember? Yeah. With alignment on them. Yeah. That's quite handy. And and they're really quite heavy in the head. Yeah. They've got a really big wide sole on it so you it can't doesn't dig, dig in. into the ground. Yeah. And uh, it is a really, really useful tool to have in the bag. I think actually probably more people should look at chippers. Yeah, I do. Um, I wonder why like, it's a shame, you know, rescues, clubs, mm -hmm. hybrids, like they could have quite easily had a similar stigma to attached to them, couldn't they? You know, they could have done. But it's funny how, why did chippers end up getting that stigma? I think it's because a rescue, a hybrid as they're known as well now, or utility, when they came out, it was almost like a new franchise of club, wasn't it? If that's yeah. the right term. It was almost like, like it says a hybrid, it was a little wood and an iron kind of fused together. It was a new type, type of club. Whereas a chipper, it was almost seems like you can just use your nine iron. But... I like them. And I would go as far to say, after the, after your response, that you endorse them. Yeah. So if anyone ever gives you any stick for having a chipper, just say, well, actually, the Rick Shields endorsed. Exactly. Um, I've, I've, I've tried a few. That, that strike one. What was that one called? Um, oh, the green one. Yeah. I can't That's remember. Something strike. I can't remember. It was actually quite good. Pure strike or something. That was quite good. The Od Odyssey one's pretty good. Yeah. I, I rate them in a big way. Question from Jordan. It's a bit of an open-ended question, really, so it's very hard to answer. But he says, how often should the average golfer change wedges? 
Oh, yeah, that's really hard, isn't it? I would say if the average golfer means, in terms of ability, it means actually how often they play, let's say, say once a week. I, I would honestly say you've got years. Yeah, I think Voki did research. Um, Voki wedges replacement that's if that's in terms of needing to replace them if you want to replace them swap them every week if you've got exactly. the money and you want to but if you, in terms of needing to very very rarely i would say genuinely so this is from uh Vokey's website so title this Vokey, the wedges and how often should you change your wedges i was hoping there'd be a quick answer but there isn't um uh, give me one second i'm sure there's a quick answer to this it was something along the lines of X amount of rounds or X amount of Balls years or, so. or oh, something. Maybe um, see your local pro. I mean, they may be inclined to sell you a wedge. They might not be. But yeah, not not that often. Probably not as often as you, you might think, actually. I wouldn't say anyway. Tour pros swap them almost monthly, don't they? Or weekly or tournament-based because they yeah, just want the absolute right. max spin. They, the difference for tour pros is it's not so much that they want max spin. Well, it is. But it's also the fact that they want that consistency every week. So if a tour pro's wedges get worn down a fraction after a month, they're not going to perform the same as they would have done at the start. So they want that consistent performance every week. Another big difference with tour pros? How they strike it, balls they, they hit. They don't pay for the wedges. They don't pay for the wedges. And they so, strike it better. And they hit more balls. Uh, okay, roughly, I think I've just read this correctly, around about 250 rounds. And that's from Titleist. So but, then, but then they're again, trying to sell wedges times, as well, aren't they? How many so times are you actually going to hit a, like a... A wet, like, well, that's what they've accounted for, I'm guessing. So if you play 50 rounds a year, which is one a week, obviously, that's five years. And that's from Titleist who want to sell you wedges. So you could probably say six or seven years, this really. Is, they're actually saying two years, which is quite bold, that, isn't it? 250 rounds in two years. But then why don't they say you have to swap your irons often? Because yeah. you still hit your irons more and you want the same spin and everything. I know you use them at the bunker, yeah, so I'm not anyway. Gonna, I'm not, we're not going to take that advice. Um, swap them when you want to swap them. Yeah. I think I would say for most golfers, you'd probably swap them by choice before you need to. Correct. And there's something nice about having a bit of an old rusty wedge in there. Yeah. Um, are we good? That's everything I had written down for this week. Well, I had nothing written down, so that's good. Standard. <laughs> <laughs> Next week's is a biggie. Uh,